Good morning everyone. It's Sunday, 23rd of October. Hope you're having a good weekend and uh, wow, there's some funny stuff, there's some fun stuff going on at the moment uh, with uh, uh, the weather and this uh, South Atlantic high. So uh, where do we start? Jeepers, I'm just, uh, I've just opened this. Sometimes it's good for me not to look at this too early. And so I've literally opened it, haven't had a look yet, but um, you can certainly see for now uh, this lead pack, it's a boat race. Uh, here's the, in fact, if we go back, you can see where Cape Town is. Um, boom, here we go. Okay, so there's Cape Town. All of these boats here are basically heading across there. Okay, so, you know, whereas Damien was, you know, 460 miles behind the leader now he's only probably less than 100 miles or so behind the you know maybe 200 or something behind because this is a benchmark they're heading this way and the way the high is at the moment um, you know Damien's uh, managing to hold up he's holding high because he doesn't have a wind vane at the moment also you know keep the wind forward of the beam but even in racing terms it's not a dumb idea because this is um, you know gonna a very distinct high which is all gonna go to the east and so uh, he's on the the back edge of it so that uh, wind direction is going to hold all the way through um, so let's just see what happens as it uh, as we pull it through. Um, so let's just see what happens as it uh, as we pull it through day by day uh, he is 24 hours ahead and uh, okay so whereas everyone is in a straight line heading down you've still got this situation where the, the classic route is to come down to the 40s parallel here uh, 40 degrees south roaring 40s and you'll usually hook up with the uh, westerlies and that's true today because there's the center of the high it's about where it should be and the ones that are up higher uh, like if we look at um, Tapio you know if you look up there he's gonna have a lot softer winds than Simon Simon's down here in the in the main uh, wind gradient he the tapio's heading straight in towards the center of the high uh, so he's got less wind so it'll go slower but you know for now they're flying simon's doing 6.9 knots which is pretty cool abolish uh, doing um, 7.2 knots which is even cooler <laughs> and uh, uh, pat is uh, making 6.6 .6 knots kirsten 6.8 knots and uh, yeah we said tapio 6.9 so they're all really making good speed and distance wise we'll just uh, let's just see where they are uh, you know on this boat race okay so 150 miles for abolish behind Simon and uh, if we uh, if we look at Tapio in a sense if we look at the course if we put that directly above Simon he's probably only 50 60 miles um, you know something like that he's not far behind in in reference to heading towards Cape Town but he's gonna have softer breeze so and he'll know that because as you said heading towards the center of the high the wind, you're watching your barometer the barometer is going up you know if you go forward uh, and if it's not you know with the wind strength you want to get down if you want the wind to increase in speed get it behind you um, the barometer may not go up because this is still going to the east so you may hold the um, may hold the same uh, isobars uh, oh, wrong, wrong button. Sorry, I want to go back here. Get oh, uh, and let's just look at where so, where where um, Damien is in terms of a boat race situation. If he's going for Cape Town, he's only 120 miles behind the leader. You know, you'll see that actually on the um, on the leaderboard. Of course, if you look at the leaderboard, you can look at the distance to the finish. Okay, and Simon's distance to the finish is. Uh, 21,104 and Damien is 23 uh, 21,300 so he's a couple hundred miles uh, behind which is not bad because he was 460 uh, before they turned the corner so I think that's pretty self-explanatory um, on the whole game there you know the, those that can turn the corner first they don't have to go this south distance uh, so what's the high moving that's one day ahead to the 24th let's go to the 25th there it is bang it's moved forward really fast and so um, you know the, the guys down low are going to be still in a little bit more breeze than Tapio if he's coming forward two days it's going to go soft here they'll slow down Simon will keep moving so that's pretty cool Kirsten probably knows that she's um, she'll you know be doing that thing with wind direction watch your barometer she'll know where she is she knows she's got to get on the bottom edge so so she'll go down and, and certainly you know pat's the same so uh, uh 25 here we go to the 26 wow it's moved across really fast uh, 27 
yeah it's going going like crazy let's just pull this back now and we'll do some distances um, okay so it's formed up as a, a little tight one that's good for the fleet because they're going to have this this uh, you know wind gradient here which is uh, plenty of breeze to keep sailing and uh, that's uh, three four five six seven four days ahead so in four days let's just go for a distance that's about 600 miles so the fleet will generally be 600 miles ahead that's about here so at this stage with this map the, the lead group is going to be in this area here so if the forecast holds that looks pretty good uh, they're going to keep moving and uh, we go forward another day Oop, and it's starting to open up a bit still they'll be down in this region that's okay and uh, towards the end Oop, that's going to uh, open up they'll be in here they've got a good wind direction here coming from the southwest now this is actually a good thing because the rule is that you should approach Cape Town from the southwest so uh, if anyone rides this up getting to Cape Town and starts approaching Cape Town from the from the west and oh, that's interesting uh, this way they could be in real trouble at the end because you you know you can get a strong southeasterly breeze coming down here uh, quite quite quickly and, and even headwinds here you can get a and you know these uh, breezes coming over the top but we'll talk about that as we get closer but rule of thumb is you do not want to approach Cape Town from the west so it'll be interesting to see who's cotton onto that um, okay so back to today's real-time weather okay um, and uh, yeah it's all looking quite cool I'll just pick it up a bit the the, the tail enders on the middle fleet back here let's just go to the back uh, you can see already here's Trinidad and remember the lead crack pack when they got here they were still dealing with southeasterly winds uh, going you know forward of the beam really uncomfortable okay um, the guys at the back here they're getting the the, the northerly slant straight away so a uh, guy will be guy will be really happy um, Elliot's making you know good time now Elliot's making 5.3 knots Ian Herbert Jones 6.2 he's happy with that uh, Nord doing the best he can at five knots uh, and uh, again the wind on the beam uh, Guy he's doing 4.2 knots not sure why because it's on the quarter uh, looks okay I spoke to Ert and uh, yes they made a, a safety call he got uh, loose bolt on his hydrovane as well and uh, loose bolt just on the the main body it was easy to just tighten it up and uh, he was telling me he was getting 40 50 knot squalls you know it was quite quite solid anyway at least the wind direction's right so he's able to head down uh, Jeremy plodding along there six knots quite fast um, and uh, uh, still in touch with the leaders effectively when you talk about finishing in La Sable alone in about another five months five months or so so um, this is still all uh, relevant just to give you an idea of the distances um, Jeremy you know he if we take this as the spot is 700 miles behind the leaders um, and that's you know sort of five days anything can happen in five days so uh, isn't you know it's too early to call you know where things are happening right now um, there's nothing to show really if we for the for the mid range fleet with the weather but I'll have a look anyway we'll just pull it through you'll see uh, three there's three uh, 25th two days ahead it's going to get light that's the the big deal for them so they'll slow down but the wind direction is staying the same so they're going to have some uh, beautiful sailing conditions <laughs> but uh, not going to get them moving anywhere in a hurry um, Elliot should be around the corner in two days so he'll then speed up a bit uh, when he comes through hopefully he can keep it moving and in the long term we'll uh, pull this forward a couple of days big holes They'll, all these guys will get caught in this uh, Jeremy will be right he'll be down here by then but uh, the tail enders they're going to have some challenges for sure uh, they'll slow down uh, it's not too bad once they get over so anyway uh, watch this space the um, it was interesting uh, we are actually doing a not an investigation but we're about to release a, a report we we treat wind vanes as a safety issue uh, on the boats you might know uh, we require everyone to have an approved wind vane and approved is just that it, the entrants have to submit a proposal uh, on any new wind vane coming in to make sure it's up to the um, you know conditions of the southern ocean with these types of boats so uh, because if, if wind vane fails in the southern ocean in a storm it's a real problem so anyway we're looking at the this issue of uh, uh, Damien's broken shaft 
uh, and uh, you know, yeah, we, we'll, we'll probably get that out on Monday. Uh, but there's some interesting aspects to this, so it's not what uh, what some people may think. And uh, we'll be, um, you know, yeah, looking into that, and we are, and we have. So, uh, uh, good luck to Damien. It's uh, quite challenging for him, you know, psychologically as well, because he, um, you know, he's already mentioned that it's hard for him now to relax to a degree because he's thinking he's waiting for this calm weather to come and he's not sure when it's going to come so he can actually work on it so how do you stay focused when you you're trying to balance your boat he'd be hand steering a bit but um uh you know it, there's this unknown entity because quite a job it's not impossible and it's not difficult but it's it's challenging when you're on a boat and you know even if you've got two meter seas it's challenging so um watch this space I think that's about it. So have a good weekend and uh, we'll uh, do the questions and answers today as well if you're looking for.